We expect them big allegio them for come and weigh in with their perspective and reflection of 60 years of independence for the Republic of Sierra Leone, the flag on a cinema background with all due respect, the beautiful colors, green, white, and blue, the blow not the wind beyond a blue and white nimbus sky. We expect Dr. Kande Yunkela for at least call, make a five minutes contribution to the program. Yes, when I hear me right. And you know, stop the war. We also expect the man who we named last year as the MP of the year, Honorable Ibrahim Tawa Conte, for also call the program and talk at least about five minutes or more if he wants about perspective of the country. And we get many more. We get many uh, uh, political party people that will come, the NDA Amadou Bari. We get Umfaji. Um, Umfaji Kaba of um, um, Kamarimba in party. We get um, Wadi Williams, we get Arnold Bendu. So we get a, 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 star, a studded star list we would expect for turn up today for grace this occasion, which is none other but the 60th independence anniversary on this very eve of that auspicious day, which is just about for unfold on us. What do you think? I want to let the chat room be busy. But I want to let we accord each other respect whilst we keep the chat room very, very busy. Remember, we've only got one country, and that one country day, now not duty for let we all see say that country day better. So despite we different views, we they expect say them views then they in the end we go disagree for agree because the bottom line is we want one common good for the country for go before let all man better. I think, say, um, I get a sister, we want to um, um, jump inside because um, a lot of people seem for the wait for the first person for have a go. So, um, the sister, you just join. I would like to let you quickly identify yourself for the purpose of the audience. And obviously, I will ask you the next question. Can you jump in, Cole? No, no, Paddy I mean, Johnson Cole. Cole. Yeah. Brother, okay. So, yeah. Paddy Johnson Cole, sister, welcome to the program. I ask everybody else for mute the microphones, please. Yeah. We get the speaker on the line. Um, sister Paddy Johnson Cole, thank you for calling the Den and Hour, participating in the Den and Hour, I believe, for the first time. You are highly welcome. Thank Today you. is a special, it's a special one, my dear sister. It's the eve of independence, 60 years of independence. Now you're not a huge stakeholder because I don't see your profile in one or two places. So what you will really try for arrive now at is forget people in passive okay, or reflection on 60 years of independence. Offer we an overview of your take on this entire exercise, please, if you will. This all, thank you, um, Prince, for, for welcoming me. Well, actually, to be honest, I don't see which thing we the celebrate, actually, because we know not achieve much in 60 years. I do appreciate, say, um, any anniversary, people can celebrate anniversary anyway, but this is such a big thing that as a reunion, we like in country and like in people there, there isn't much to show for 60 years where we don't get so far. Is it so? To me, is um, we get so many suffering in the country. I don't know whether you want me to go through that direction that route now. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Is that what you? Yeah, me? I mean, if you can, if you can, why why you overview on the thing? There are so many people, and I believe they all want to contribute. And we get the star guest, Mr. Alpha um, Emba, Cherno Alpha Emba. Yeah. So, me of view about the whole thing is this, you see. With all the, I'm not, I don't know how much it's going to cost the country, yeah, the Santo, for making this celebration because it's quite a big one and money go involved, you see. But really, yeah. to be honest, you see, uh, you know, I'm not happy because I know so many people suffering in the country, you see, they suffer. So, yeah. it, 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 it can, I never feel good when I they, at the say government they spend money unnecessarily when they can use that money there for help poor people then. I, I, I'm not too happy about that at all. 
you get me? Because at least people they suffer, they will go spend money for a celebration. Although I don't know how much it's gonna cost us, maybe something that cost me anything. But if it cost me such a large sum, then to me, you know, I mean anything because no. we're not getting much for show sure for 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 sixth year anniversary actually me, if Namio I think to say that yeah, will be shame self for saying we don't sixty because we don't sixty you see some countries then we months, don't sixty months. they get a lot we do not achieve we not achieve nothing as a young follow with the even because we don't sixty years, years old get me I think we for shame self for saying we don't sixty years old because how much achieve much Prince make I just stop Naya for now because I just log in okay. Yeah, exactly. Please let me observe some rules, please. I mean, if you not a talk, keep your phone on mute. Just basic um, request, please, please, please. Um, sister, uh, uh, yeah, so like I can say, Lord, we observe the basic rules. Do ya? Let me show some more come of respect for we um, um, other guests. Them, Sister Kadi uh, Johnson, cool. Um, well said. But quickly, let me ask you one question before I bring Mister Backham into the picture. Um, okay. obviously, I go tend for think that you come from an era prior to all of them problems they are with they see. So, in other words, you must have seen the good side. If there is a good side and bad side, I don't know whether you will agree with me. Not necessarily bad, but from um, an era where are they supposed to, you see, as opposed to now, you can give me some perspective on that. Well, what are the right. differences? What can we do? You're quite right, Prince. There's two sides to everything in this world. Say, so cannot be that bad, you get me, you see. Okay, one or two things, and they we it, it depends on how far back you want me for go. You see, because like the ten and where we they go school, where we they go school, you see, school was was good. Let's say that we they even look to the inter secondary school sports. Yeah. We're not a big team for we, you see. We we, we get all things and then we they look forward to them with Thanksgiving service then. We we get a lot of things then. We school them because me for me, example, let I take me school when me go FSG school where I go. Were you good eh? Ever since you school in those days, when you go eh? everybody was for letting picking go to that kind of school then, eh? you get me? Yeah. You see, but now, learning everything was okay, you see? But like now, but when you look at, uh, you go now like um, uh, Freetown, you go on uh, Wilberforce Street. The way Wilberforce Street been there, you see? Not to talk Wilberforce Street town now, you see? Mm. So everything, don't they change? We, yes, not also, it, it, they were even, they're not also there now. You see, and then when you look at um, we, 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 we educational facilities as well, you see, and not particularly thing to say, well, maybe sometimes these governments say that they do much, you understand it, you see, so with all respect to this government, you get me, but the education side really, to be honest, you get me, not to today no more, it don't go down. Education don't go down for many years now, you get me, you see. But waiting and not waiting, I refuse for accept. Thank you for eight hours. Uh, waiting me refuse. Waiting I refuse. Can, 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 can you mute your phone? Okay, I think I need for begin people and come out. And continue with this that. Waiting me refuse for accept. Which I even during the APC government time, education wasn't that superb. Not at all. Yes, me. Yes, and similarly. With the, this government as well, with all this free education, with and say they don't get, you get, you see, what I refuse for accept to this government, this current bio government, whether they talk say, is they are not achieve everything in education, and when they, they always they go back say, oh, you see, the other governments me do do, the other governments not responsible like this, no, 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 they shouldn't be saying the government is responsible. That was why the other government was kicked out. Then bring on a camp. For let on a chain things in, you see. Okay. So they expect for the chain things and not for they go back and say this other government not being do well and not being do well. The education, me for me, I don't know, but I feel to say education be done bad throughout. Like <laughs> <And even> now, <laughs> if they say education good, if they say education good now, <laughs> come the current government, all them picking and not they go na 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 state school say. Because if they go to state schools, then they then get that moral standing for can't tell we say education good. 
But if your children goes to private school, so you cannot come and tell us that the education system is good. If you go, why you not put your bikini? You get me. So these are the sort of things where we say 60 years, 60 years by now, therefore they correct things and this government not in a power for over four years now, three years now. Therefore don't pay a power now for do things, you see. I supported the government, I criticized APC government, you get me. But this government in terms of waiting, they do so now, you see. I think to say, you get me, all the one that we they criticize APC government, some of us would they in regret, you get me, because we not see. They, they spend money, you know, they say they spend on education, education, education. But I think they're not being planned and well. If they had planned it well, all they could have done is get a pilot scheme for one area first and see how it's going to work. You get me? But they only get a pilot mm -hmm. scheme. So they take so much load, too much load for them where they're not able to deliver plan. You get me? So for yeah. me, I am not particularly happy with these 60 years at all. That money could have been spent in a better way. For other people, they let people they enjoy and let people then get money. People don't get money for it. It's okay. Like when okay, I will, I, will pa I will pause you this small, but there is, a, there is more time. There's more time on the show, but good perspective. Um, people will not get money for it. They can equally save that money day or try for make provisions for, for people. But there's an obligation on part of government. We'll see. So let's call on um, Mr. Cherno Alpha M. Bar. Mr. Bar, are you there, sir? Mr. Ba? Yes, I did. Good. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, obviously, we've got Mr. Cherno Alpha M. Ba on the platform, as we promised Una. And um, by virtue of video relay, Una can see I'm live. And Cherno, we don't go deep into the show. We're going to warm up the floor like a warming up. Here you are. So I want um, um, a reflection of 60 years um, from you end, provide a kind of perspective. And again, my understanding is you are not a fan of um, independence. I don't know whether I get that right or the way they construe them. So you get a view. So can you provide some perspective and reflection for us, please? No, I, I not think say, um, the, well, I'm not a fan of independence. That's not the question. The question is, um, whether we see African countries as being independent. You don't, you don't understand, that's a different question. But every human being, um, one for be free, one for get what we call self-determination, and the ability for do things on your own and uh, without um, depending on uh, someone else. So on the country level, we can refer uh, countries as independent, not just forget um, individuals of their own communities being in charge of their own affairs, which is one aspect of independence. But then um, I, I think we say we're different with many people. Or we say um, the differences appear. I think that much of what in the previous um, uh, sister been to talk about, uh, Kadi Johnson Cole, they talk about the there's not much to celebrate, there's not much to talk about. Because this hinge on the question yeah. of development, um, the ability of a, of a country for run what we call an independent national economy, an economy that produces, that is based on industrialization, an economy where the export um, all, all, all over the world, um, we don't see countries that have been colonized. You look at China, you look at India, you look at places like that, and then you you see since then depart from. Uh, colonial domination to now, they don't, they don't advance technologically, they don't advance um, intellectually, they don't advance culturally and economically as well. They get a, an independent national economy. The Chinese economy, for example, uh, now one of the biggest or largest economies now. Um, they contend with any European economy, they export and they produce. So many African countries, um, in, in fact, we're not going to be called really a national economy in a place like Sierra Leone, in the real sense of it, there is no, there are no industries, and you know they talk about export of raw material, just that kind of trade there, and much of what we call trade again, only happen between African countries. But it good for also look at um, what we call sixty years of self-rule, sixty years since um, colonial officials, white administrators, give power to. African people, what have we been able to do with our own um, societies? What did not happen? 
you know, in these 60 years, how we don't, has anything changed from the colonial legacy where we inher- where these people inherit and whether um, the indices on development, statistics on poverty, statistics on human development generally, um, are anything we're proud of. If not, then waiting basically don't serve as hindrances to the realization of the kind of society where we all need. For example, life expectancy lower necessarily on than many parts of the African continent. Women still uh, uh, get challenges with childbirth. We still suffer from infant uh, um, deaths, you know, under five uh, mortality figures are still high. These are basically the result of the lack of social services where we, where we require housing, good roads, electricity, you know, things that basically the common good of, of, of society where many parts of the world don't even think about them because you're there in England, you're there in America, in some part of Africa, you don't even think about blackout as electricity as, as a challenge. You know, they've caught you saying something. You can just run and just midnight and just turn you, you tap and uh, pipe burn water, you know, okay. the run. So all them things, yeah. Absent as alone, they are, they are basically dreams now, dreams, you know, to right. the extent that now, now, now boreholes, water wells, nine, 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 nine people they, they think about. Um, you define the whole community, now one day water well, they, more than 200 people, 500 people in that community depend on that well. We can dry out, <clears throat> and not, <clears throat> not even clean, and mostly they see Pekin and they spend many, many hours trying to just get basic things like water, so these are basically the, the uh, serious problems we got to make. We think about the, the state in itself as the embodiment of your aspirations, as the instrument through which we were able to uh, channel some of these we aspirations and, and, and work towards the realization and the resolution of them problems there. But things then just keep getting worse from one um, year to the next year, with it, with, like now, many of the people who talk about nostalgia, oh, good old days. So if you think about the 60s was better, then you see say, the 70s get worse. People in the 70s go to say the, the 70s better than the 80s. So like that. Now, um, you go find out, say, the 90s again with all the war, you go think about, say, oh, light being this society. But now increasingly the war done done, then go say the, there is no more uh, civil war, but still the conditions we precede the war, we even generate the war still, don't become amplified. So, okay. Um, we, we, we're not you know, I mean, very so good. We're not talking about independence and celebration. That's what we can go on with um, um, on and on and on and on and on. Um, it absolutely makes sense. But I think what you have derived from there is we can look at them um, in two folds. One was um, a period in which um, people uh, um, being there for self determined, I mean, they take things into their own hands, their own destiny yeah. into their own hands. What they make of them um, in reflection. It is show the negatives. Uh, I believe this is what it is. We, we haven't developed at all because you make examples of places like China. Just 30 years ago, they were to a third world country. And 30 years on, they are a superpower and the world's biggest economy, although not officially yet. Um, Mr. Mr. Ba, um, I want to go straight to the point. One of the things that we don't make you famous now, every in quarter na Sierra Leone and the international community is acts where they can attribute to something a Western world called whistleblowing. Before I move any further, I want to ask you whether you not mind when people uh, attribute your works or which and uh, use that adjective there if you like, um, whistleblower. Do you consider yourself a whistleblower? No, I, I, I think um, the word Basically, in a, um, when you say what what this way characterize the kind of work with the African Express they do as doing, you don't really um, deviate from the actual work that we do. We we know the whistle blow because my own understanding of whistle blowing basically is an individual. For example, you get our uh, honorable Ibrahim Tawa Conte on this show for more understanding. What did he do with Parliament, for example, by signaling he's part of Parliament, and you see how Parliament function, how Parliament is operating. 
and you're not satisfied, then decide for raise questions of accountability. Basically, he, he, he ring the bell on, on parliament as an integral member of parliament, basically an eyewitness account of what is happening. It can happen in both ways. Either you speak out or you decide for, for anonymously uh, release certain uh, um, transactions of, of an institution or an administration where ordinarily uh, will not come out. So the idea of whistleblowers is that the person will necessarily be an inward, somebody with an integral component of the arrangement and functioning of that. But what we do uh, um, is basically journalism. Um, journalism is not it is it is reporting. There are many components of it. The uh, journalism media can entertain, can educate, can also inform society. Okay, my own understanding of my work is basic. It comes from this tradition where I think the media should function, or people within the media should function as part of the thinking representatives of the society. Okay, being also spokespeople in the society in which they find themselves. That's the tradition of the press. And the tradition of the press don't change now drastically in this course of the 500 years, if we, if we, if we just speak abruptly. Because the, the, um, in the past, for people who study political science, who study other things, and you get writers, uh, the John Locke, the um, Baron de Montesquieu, the, uh, even Aristotle, okay? Also, these are basically individuals who have been a critique society at the time, right? About what they were not comfortable with for exposing society. So the media get different components. Then now journal journalism it became an integral component of that particular uh, tradition of the press. So the press, where you where you expand the the canvas of 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 the press, the very you know this landscape with the press day, you define say writers are there, novelists are there, dramatists will be there. So basically. Um, I, Nowadays, now, you know, terminologies, they develop over time. People, they develop definitions, people, they develop terms and all of that. But I am basically um, a member of the media that I, I start off as a journalist, writing in newspapers. That is the tradition I've continued. Then branch out from newspapers to writing books. Basically, the books that we again where they write, they are basically now, the, now a long version of a newspaper essay. That, that's, that's what it is. Um, now you see, I try to do a critique of the democratic um, arrangement na, 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 na Salon, what I call democracy, the next book coming out, democracy betrayed. So basically some of it give, deal with questions of corruption, questions of um, uh, governance, dictatorships and authoritarianism, history, uh, manifestation of the state entangled within itself. And they all deal with the general democratic landscape. So basically Mina, me not a whistleblower. I am just, and I do investigations in, into okay. General, conduct of government. Many thanks for joining the time between whistleblowing and a process of um, um, a journalist and defining what a journalist um, supposed for stand for, what he stand for, and give you a historical perspective as as far back as the days of Aristotle and spreading it wide for everybody for understand. Quite necessary. But this is part of the debate that is ongoing. Um, a lot of the things they want to ask you, and that you can always do, you can sort of compress them, you, you know, because you can go on this lengthy, you, you know, um, um, digression about issues, which I really, really do appreciate because you make it very more um, um, interesting. Some of the things they want to pick up, because there's a lot said, let's see whether we can unpack some of them quickly. But um, Fambulem, today, the eve of Sierra Leone independence, we have none other than Mr. Cherno Alpha Emba, one of the editors of the African Express. We don't pull Boku Boku story about the current government and the work not only start now, it go beyond this government. And as far as we know, and evidence is there for speak to that, this brother has been doing this thing, you know, calling out on government beyond the Julius Malabio government. So it's not like um, it's personal, although we will come to that um, shortly. But we ask Kuna, let other people and be a witness to this as well. Let hear it from Cherno himself and not be told. This is important to be a part and parcel of this very, very important conversation. 
rather than an interview. Chino, you said a lot about um, uh, press don't change. And I sure change in a different sense because it, in one sense, it has evolved. Press journalism has evolved. The age of social media is here. Uh, print media is relevant or less relevant and social media is here. So it gives you all a kind of platform and the middleman has been removed so we can channel your own story and give me the possibility for talk to you as we do so tonight and talk for we people. Um, what's your view about um, journalism back home, the media houses back home, the journalists back home? What's your take on them? Yeah, <laughs> like to understand the media landscape in a salon, I believe every individual in the first place a reason how they arrive at a particular destination. You know, there could be personal stories, there could be um, historical circumstances we push the person towards that. We, we, in, this, in, this, um, in this current um, situation, for being so brief, now that we get very good journalists, we get very good Sierra Leone, now a country we get a rich tradition of the media okay the media now now west africa because because of we get the first um um what we call western institution of higher learning and and we get the first university we get we also get some of the first earliest newspapers and at the continent start with with with, with they one of the earliest and we get one of the most uh prominent uh, journal, journal when you look at the archives you see the salon, salon news you see the debate when they happen within the Creole community and outside of the critique against the colonial state. We can get people like Wallace Johnson, you know, when one of the most prominent uh, um, trade unionists, you know, anti-colonial agitator and also a journalist use the media. So the media then serve as an instrument for exposed colonial injustice, colonial corruption, colonial exploitation, what you call colonial uh, uh, exploitation and uh, corruption the loot of we raw materials at the time under the colonial state and the transfer of them that were to Europe, to England and other destinations. So that tradition, they still continue. Now, in modern times, I would call it corruption because we young people in the dua. Okay, but in the past, the, the, the press defined that as exploitation. That doesn't mean there were, there were no stealing of public resources. We look at it, see the, the corrupt tradition again within the civil, this, uh, uh, councils at the time, colonial administrations, but for the most part, like the transfer of wealth. So the press at the time, when they agitate for a number of things, the integration of Africans into the colonial administration, for say the African people never get representation inside the colonial government. They, then they call for changes in, in certain laws. Then they also call for independence. So you can get different newspapers then. So now, so again now, and then newspapers, there's some been decided that some, that some educated Africans, they want for the part of the colonial government, they want to get uh, into, this, into the legislative assembly, they want to get into self-government, to get cabinet. So now there's again that tradition with the absence of the colonial state, now you see the press change, who are pro this party, pro that other party, or you get journalists again where not agree with the system, they will tell you, say, the minister is then bad, that the president, uh, 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 the president will get problems, people are around them. You will get people again, we're opposed to the entire system, but then get one or two people within the system, we are then you we then go defend them. You don't understand? For example, we get a case where when we when we write about um uh the the lack of uh payment of timber revenues, okay. You get private journalists that win a private journalist, then we're supposed to be private journalists, not to people that work for government to the government television or government newspapers or ruling party newspapers, they would defend the individual, they defended the individual involved in this case because this individual is their patron, is their friend. You go write about the Ministry of Youth or the Ministry of, of Finance. The Ministry of Finance getting young press people within the private press where perhaps then the bank roll them. So it happens. It, we, we get our case. So you get this, you get this polarized, you get this various contending interest in the media. Part of it get to do with the poverty in the country. So the poverty in the country, in the, in the, in the stimulant to, to some of these corrupt uh, client and patron relationships. So many people cannot function outside of a relationship with the state. Okay. So you find out say, if you if you know the in the government, in the government, you get to get somebody inside government for make sure say you will function. 
because in general newspapers in a saloon most of them they print 16 pages some 20 something pages okay sell newspaper for two, the newspaper price now 2000 but they give it to the vendors perhaps for 1500 or 1300 so many newspapers do not print up to 2000 or even more say 3000 some some they print less than 1000 okay so the cost of the sales no they even no they even do the way you sell the newspaper, the cost of the sales, not the offset the cost of printing. So, which but is that not in itself? You, is that not itself a prelude to kind of bribery and no, me, you know, no, they become a, vulnerable? Make a just, make a just. That are the canto. Some of because okay. if they critique the press, if they criticize the press and how the press they function, we get to also understand the conditions under which the press they operate. Then we select one or two people who are under that difficulty again. Okay, one or two, three. Who single out under that difficulty, we still they try to maintain a greater level of independence because we talk about independence now as a country. Absolutely. So independence as a country, therefore, do with independence of institutions, independence of the individuals within the country as well, ability to live and thrive without having this, without free from this Patreon client like a country therefore depend on England, IMF, World Bank. Okay, now we're not going to talk about development as alone. Government, you will even uh, the president talks say they have to have a clean bill, bill of health from the IMF to be able to function. That is dependency. He, the, the, they celebrate dependency as a as a as a as a an indicator of success. Okay, so in other countries that, that's a laughing situation. So the same way again in, in trying to look at independence of the media, we got to understand the condition environment under which the media they function. And the media also is suffering from the poverty. In the country, because for business, the media, if you get a newspaper, that newspaper just depends on the sales of the newspaper. You're not going to be able to run the newspaper because okay. the cost of the sales will not, the, 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 the return of the sales, cost of running the newspaper, yeah. so paying, paying the staff. So, Cherno, um, just a short answer from you on this one, which is um, um, when I see you talk, um, there is a stress in some of the words. And looking at it from a psychological point of view, then stress notes then they, like when it comes to social, when it comes to justice and the context in which you use them, it seems like um, these things are kind of personal to you. So the question there is, where do you derive the oxygen from and why are you into this? This is not like um, fun, this is serious. Who said this motivation come out and what did it drive you? In other words, that's the oxygen I'm talking about. Is it about the people, social justice, and etc.? What is it? Well, uh, generally, uh, as, as an individual, I, uh, I just find myself in a situation where I cannot accommodate injustice against another human being. Okay, I, I, I find my own freedom in the freedom of the general society. Okay. So the oppression against somebody else can just um, immediately trigger me into, into uh, questioning what can I do to resolve the situation. So that's part of it. Part of it gets to do with an orientation that makes me to see. Uh, it's it, it difficult for talk about then it means I'm, I'm not trained with the tradition of talking about yourself. Uh, and it's very difficult because then you put, I always want my work to speak for me. But one of the reasons why I do what I do, because I, I have come to find out that these levels of oppression, this poverty, these, um, like what we the tribe to talk about now, the media, how can we have a media institution or a group of, how can we have a newspaper that can stand against the injustices in society? The, and that those injustices and they go along with the theft of the national resources, the oppression of people. How and history now, I look, looking through history and seeing how people who suffer from the same kind of situations also offered the sacrifices okay. that are necessary to attempt to resolve that question. It's not like you have all the solutions, but what can you play as an individual to create a better society, a better environment in which you want to live? For example, if you want to teach in a university now, or you want for teaching at a school, what is the salary of a teacher? So, and teachers are not even well paid. They are not regularly paid. So if you want to become a teacher, and I'll say, you definitely get for strong, you know, get, for, get choice. But if you want to remain the teacher and practice and teach, because that is what you love, 
you definitely get for fight for better conditions for the teacher in order for you to be able to fight. So in extension, you're also fighting for the interest of this group that you want to be part of. So we are, what I'm saying is that personal, your personal struggle also get for be, get for reflect the general aspiration of the country. So my motivation are the fact that uh, it's impossible for me for just live in a situation where they see oppression, see injustice, see corruption. I know um, I close my eyes. I that is, that is it. That. So even the extreme face, you, you know, yeah, when you say that, and that's what I was speaking to, and you've just addressed that, and many thanks for that. So you are moved by the injustices um, in a law against a people, a vulnerable people. You can't stand that, and if you not speak up, you don't feel, you don't just feel right. But here's the thing. In the work where you do, um, uh, Mr. Ba, um, you've done great damage. Okay, and the evidence is there. We can point to data and statistics and reaction because there's a reactionary element as far some of the things them way you don't do. A government is, uh, or officials of government now feel threatened by your works. I know some people may want to deny that, but the evidence is there again. The circumstances are there. The reactions are there by these officials to whom or for whom you've exposed certain things and to the people then. And um, your, pub your publication, they now they talk about generally. You are equally threatened, and these are some of the evidence then, by the same people whom you've written against, you know, with um, things they wait supposedly for the evidence, although then they deny the last meaning. My question to you, um, 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 Mr. Barr, on this basis is, um, one, do you feel threatened? Because I'm not saying threats go to you. You've spoken about, about that. Some of the officials have sent you personal threats. And um, I think you said you've recorded those threats and they are on standby for whatever thing you decide to do. That's one. Do you feel threatened by these officials? I mean, basically, is there a component of fear in you now as per this um, mighty task way you don't undertake? And... Um, if you can tell me this, I'll give me the next question why I want to jump to quickly. And if you can just summarize and quickly the issue about fear. Oh, um, uh, I know the lost sleep over uh, the work that I do. Mm. I uh, always try for make sure that I don't mm. accuse and falsely. I have never, may I tell you now, I have those individuals who know me, they can say this to you or anyone who has worked with me closely or from distance. I have never in my life used a pen name, a pseudonym. This is 21 years of writing. I know they ever write anything, I put somebody in name day. Never. I know they ever do. And why is part of a principle for make sure say, I hold myself accountable to anything that I write today, tomorrow, and not only that. I write because I want to also document my own ideas and me thinking as some, I, I train as a historian, okay? I train as a historian. Uh, I believe in history, believe, say, your work should outlive you. And I also do not want my kid or kids to grow up and, and be, think about the kind of man I was, um, what constitutes my thinking, how I saw the world, and what I try to do to change. So I, I basically, that's one of the things we make at the right. For make sure say, I do what I do. So nobody will say not this, not that. So I have never used, why I say I've never used a, a pseudonym because I stand by anything that I write and I make sure. So on that basis, that write, you, know, you stand by everything that thing. you write. Can you tell Fambulem what kind of precaution or method and way you can use for ensure that the information is out there about people are right? Tell Fambulem yeah. for me, please. It, it, it has to be, there are multiple layers to it, but one of it is that it has to be uh, uh, solid proof. And I, and I receive all kinds of information. I work with all kinds of people. Um, people who have worked with me also, go tell you, say, I'll give you one example. Uh, this, 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 is, this is very recent. Towards um, December, someone floated, um, somebody you know, within even how I operate, just decided from the blues for contact me and decide for give me um, information that appear to be very serious. I don't say this, but I want to say, I'll just tell you how I take, how I take care. Okay. 
And I decided to investigate that information to find out whether the information is supposedly correct. And at the surface of it, it looked very appealing, very because it's, it's very scandalous. And then I, I spent time and investigate not the not the information force, the individual that gives me the information, because that individual is not part of, it's a new individual that just popped up. So I investigate the individual, investigate who that individual is, and the individual appear for be unconnected to establishment. So you know, go suspect and say, but then I came to find out there was a seriously highly placed individual in government, in this current government, that gave that individual what appeared to be evidence that was false. So this individual, now that I'm saying, maybe if you person the listen, you're going to, you're going to decide for. <laughs> but anyway, I, I investigated and I knew even how much this individual has been paid to give me what appears to be evidence that was false, which would have forced me to publish if I was just publishing without verification or investigation of the, okay. I investigate evidence. We investigate evidence. Absolutely. Okay? And not only me, I work with a team of people who are experts, things that we don't understand. For example, when we, when we got this evidence of leadway trading, when we own research got into that, and we see, say, from custom record, leadway exported over 2 million metric tons of timber, and this by changing the government of Sierra Leone, they, they had deprived the country of over $5 billion uh, in dollars. We were shocked. We said, no, this cannot be true. We debated that for three weeks among ourselves. So in the final, we wrote the article, uh, the first article where we write, on 20 minutes to publication, I had to change both the headline and the content. Okay, because I look at the $5 billion at the time and look at the, the, the financial, financial reports of the country, I said, no. This, there must be some so time aside. We had to send that information to some of our colleagues who are also financial experts with Thompson in Canada and other places for very for help we verify this. So the first article we published, we just talked about the amount of revenue that we are collected that we are not banked, not the, the money that they that they have deprived the country. So that when the publication go out, then two weeks a week later we can verify again. We therefore check the custom records from Sierra Leone and the destination points who said this shipment and go and all that, then we calculate again, comparing data and quality, they can say, okay, in potential revenues, this figure is absolutely correct. That's when we put it out now. Okay. So, so basically, um, there are also the methods, triangulation. For example, if you say, so, so person don't take so, so money, we go to bank statistics, we go to invoice, all these publications who we publish. So if we say, for example, government don't give this person, if, if we say somebody don't go withdraw, government don't allocate to the first lady X amount of money. Before then they wire the money, there has to be correspondences from this office to that office, that office. So we just don't, don't, don't just look at the bank statement. Follow the money, follow the money trail. Yeah, we look at the corresponding papers leading to the transaction. The correspondences will lead to the actual action before you look at, because the bank statement is basically the result of the, the, the bureaucratic operation. Now the end product of correspondences then translate that the end product of the action, or the final product of the action. Why is important? Because somebody can write a letter for withdrawal money, then it end, they don't withdraw. But then when you see the documents that talk about, oh, we don't allocate, this person needs so-so money, then the Minister of Finance writes a response when I give so-so money, we got to see if the money has been moved. Okay? So all, yeah, all those General, things. just 30, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Why do you think to this moment in time, with all the documents there, these questions that I'm asking quite relevant and they are for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. Why do you think up to this time, all the documents there we don't produce were by many means necessary, look very, very authentic. Other than that, they will have been challenged a long time ago by very powerful people that you're going up and against. Why do you think some people still, they call these um, documents irrelevant or fake and et cetera? What, you, no, you, they, you have had a second guess why? No, I, I know why, <laughs> because it, it, the point here is that, I mean, it, you, 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 can, you can catch somebody in the act of doing something, they will definitely have, find a way to deny, uh, or they just keep quiet, or they shy, they just retreat. Okay. But this, this is the thing, the people who are denying the evidence are not government officials. These are basically... Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, supporters of the government who want to explain for government, uh, but they cannot explain because the evidence so they may not start by denying yeah. and they cannot shift from that because they don't want to consider 
the fact of the yeah. matter is it deals with the partisan interest okay and i can it's also it comes to family values okay we have people in our families for example we then you know they can go joke to them because if you do bad they will tell you there and then but you get other people then this deals with parents it deals with even among siblings there are brothers that you have who will look at you and say hey that ain't no sense so if you do anything he go he go tell you how it is there are other right. families you know play right, so it's, it's the human nature but the fact of the matter yeah. is that um the evidence speaks for itself okay for okay. me it does speak for itself i am so, you, you, you know. i can laugh while they see the, the way they deny <laughs> because when when they deny, I, I, I present more <laughs> and it's, it's never, it's never another, another 30 seconds another 30 seconds for you quickly i want to go to something even more serious you know here for step up the game in the interview and um 30 seconds um more mr mr bar you see for day right now the se- right now the center of a storm and yeah that's an apt description the center of a storm um we recently see the proposal for a cyber law bill a cyber law a proposal for a cyber law mm-hmm. and that cyber law proposal day it looks center because Cyber law yeah, is a multifaceted thing where a country can introduce and put into law because they feel threatened by many, many things, whether or not um, credit card fraud and many other frauds. But all of them, they're not prevalent in the room. One of the key things and where you can see inside the poorly drafted uh, um, um, cyber law is one way regarding data, communication, media, and et cetera. Give you an overview about a cyber law. What's your take? Is it attributed to people like you, obviously, in the media? What is your general view, Mr. Barr? No. Um, you know, we got to understand the nature of the state in itself, how the state they behave. And for the most part, when you get rogue uh, politicians in power, they definitely will invent um, tools of repression for try to always hold, hold uh, people them back from interrogating how governments in the function and this is also not new and the techniques the techniques of control, techniques of repression can change but repression goes along with with with, with governance um the state in itself by nature is violent the governments are violent entities um that's why they have an army that's why they have police that's why they have jails that's why they have court have a fire service they can also choose for use these instruments of coercion and repression in the general good of the people for protect the people but if, but for the most part they do these things because they want to up for example um before i come to cyber for just as you say you cannot you don't have to expect anything different than what we've been presented a few days ago we see this what appears to be like incidents of violence all over the place police the beat women random violence like i sat back and looked at it from being familiar with regime rogue regimes and them behavior i have interacted with people that are people that i talked to i even was i posted that i hope to create the the um the semblance of some kind of how they for use police uh, emergency rather than declare cough for you or yeah. state of emergency we so we saw yesterday two or three incidents that people um put into context excuse me this is a departure but i think opportunity for address and then it, it oh, yeah, absolutely that's why we ask you this question, question. Of legislation. Forget. now we saw presidential guards deliberately I was going to ask you that yeah threatening threatening violence against political opponents of the government not only violence threatening to kill people if yeah. they protest against government okay then we saw the police also the inspector general of police giving mar- the armed wing of the police not just regular police but armed wing of the police the paramilitary wing of the police and then along with it 
somebody floated what appeared to be an audio inciting violence. I will imagine, I will be forced to think, the first thing is that, oh, um, if this government really concerned about this incidence of violence, whether by cry out the happiness, they're having a party at the stadium, okay? Because when general chaos they happen in a country, what governments do, they try to, con they try to maintain <laughs> peace. They will be worried. But when you see bike riders in their hundreds attack in front of a TV station, then go to police stations, storm police stations, storm uh, transportation agency, then they react to a state operation. You go deliberately you know, say this is animated by the state. They were not worried because this is not independent. If they were worried, the cabinet, senior members of the government, the chief minister in the cabinet, and then um, uh, some of the MPs were in the stadium having a soccer. They happen. Okay, that tells you. The government will say it's not going anywhere because control it. And each of these no, protests him. will happen. With seeming protests will happen. Significant uh, property damage, even the, the police stations we talk about, apart from that accident, um, independent bike rider. We're not a part of these bike riders. Them. You, you, you. What I'm saying is that we get for no, look at... Understand, say governments again ask hard questions because now, if they are concerned, they knew they were inviting guests, they have to put fear into the minds of people so people will be more concerned about their security than for even celebration. This massive entertainment celebration, entertainment, they are entertaining themselves, which is similar to what the first lady did. Okay, the first lady took money from our national guest, first, uh, her colleague first ladies, is to come to Sweden, she's attest, attested to that. Now the president, three years, is inviting international, his, his colleague presidents to come to Sierra Leone to have a feast, to have entertainment, along with him, dinners, you know, and all of these things. And this, the budget goes beyond 30 billion, okay? And spending this money when a few days ago they were not even paying nurses, they were not paying cleaners, they were not wow. paying doctors because there's there's some threat, there's even threat to, to security. They don't make somebody, don't somebody from the state will be creating uh, this massive police presence all over the place, okay, to create the same. So people will be worried about their safety. So to fed the council when there is really if the state is that <laughs> concerned they will not be having this the governments operate differently rogue regimes rogue politicians corrupt politicians behave differently. the techniques of governance the techniques of governance involve state and know when citizens actually the protest and when governments engineer protest or when government action engineer protest for making them able Contain further contain populations. Governments do this all over the world. So we also, along with, I think key thing we never get for try for do. We get for try for for me politically in the sense that they don't just have to think think about elections. They don't just have to think um, vote in one party in and one party out. They have, have to think about how to understand Absolutely. government, the character of governance, the name. I was, going to, I was going to ask that exactly, but so, so um, this, this cyber bill, this cyber bill, yeah, we go still, we go still <laughs> to that because I get one critical side where I want that. But the way you lay, the way you lay the case, I mean, most people in comprehension because this is kind of and not really rocket science or sophisticated. Waiting at the uh, the signs, wait for, look for. If something of that nature is just being uh, a state sort of just in a time when I mean they invite big guests there for come and look at the way I just weeks ago or months ago there was no money for pay 
frontline health workers. We saw all of this, and yet people had to swoop into town for celebration. The people and they watch and they catch up, and you make a very good point. Let's see. Um, let me bring meeting room, if you will, sir. Mike, you want to make any contribution to this program? Brother Mike? Brother Mamadou? You want to make any reflection so far? Okay, Fambulem. Um, I don't think say any of them get yes, they are ready for me. Try to change their minds later, but just a reminder, Tiga Leon's 60-year anniversary. 60 years ago, on, we are talking about how far we've come. Who's can gain the world or make, or make games at all, or the games they will make, whether we are losing them. But today, at the 20s, and we start guests in the studio, none other but Mr. The African Express, now in the talk to me this evening. We'd expect a statement of the Yunkela, Dr. Kande, we we'll hear from you. There are no questions, sir. We just want to, um, Honorable Tawa Conte. I know they sign on earlier on, but probably in the five minutes, and then you can take your leave. But we will appreciate that, and I'm sure just five minutes of reflection, nothing too political. Just reflection on the then and now. These are gentlemen, like I say again, this is not the then and now platform, not the host prince. And we they ask for continue for shape. We know say the numbers are increasing, but we expect more. The room, if we just um, um, do um, uh, probably, probably three times, maybe we we'll are one for view. And we we'll get chairing on Emba and hopefully we'll attain that objective. That was the cyber, that was the cyber law. And cyber law crime seemed to be focused on, um, on the media data collection. Um, there, there's always some. Can you make a case the last point where you make a reflection? Sometimes government just set up these kind of things, and the things that involve it's not only to Sierra Leone or in Sierra Leone, but all over the world. So they set up a case. The, the argument now, argue. So the argument here is we all know, say, or most people let know, say, president get a proclamation on this census business as part of the institution, but there are just to follow, not because the pronouncement, then that's the end of it. And procedures, as we are made to understand, are not followed, especially 28 days or so after the it will have to be done again. But can you weigh in on this debate about this midterm census? All about in your view, is it necessary as at this time? What impossible? The ordinary spectrum. Well, um, the census, of course, uh, the people who don't argue for the census and argue against the census, they already um, the underlying um, motives behind just the counting of people and and just just for no the population size that. Those who work there, they, they, they think they, they should do a census because that's why they that gives them the but all of our censuses are, are a political tool. Um, uh, one of the civil society people who has been to some extent linked, um, whose work has been by people's estimation linked with, with government, I think um, I had his name in argue say. Um, the previous census by 2015 uh, developed statistics that were uh, uh, 
um, that we are not reflective of the population uh, dynamics that the country or the population size that the country. And that in a new view, government for increased representation by multiplying number of constituencies and all of that. But this is the thing. There is no sense that is going to, whether we take that as the basis of an argument, there is no guarantee that this current census is going to produce um, any figure that will be also reflective of the entire population is going to misplace this. The, 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 the country, not even that entire size of a population. Even in Freetown, where you can uh, travel around, the informal settlements that we don't grow, we don't develop, In mountains and inaccessible. So, uh, if that is the basis of the argument for the new census, it is it is that the census get for do with the government, the current ruling party's determination for multiple. They also want to equalize the same thing. That That's the argument from SLP. Want to create two more districts. This general um, impression that but the census have to do with the government, the current ruling party's determination. This current party in power attack parliament with police and decide for remove, for impose first a, a speaker of parliament. We're not supposed for the parliament in the first place. Deliberately stole parliamentary majority, hijacked the parliamentary leadership through the use of the police, and then use the judiciary for also uh, take parliamentary majority. Now, you remove parliamentarians, 10 of them, and then decide, say, the second person when I run up, when I'm members of your party, you, you give them parliamentary majority through the court. Use the executive power for take parliamentary leadership. Use the judicial authorities for also steal uh, members still sits representation of parliament from elected members. And in, in another area where they knew the second runner-up was not an SLPP candidate, they organized a re-election. Then tried several of outside the neighborhood. You see, 110, that's what we had. So what, what it makes sense now for say, they cannot repeat this action in the next parliament. If we go to elections in 2023, which or the next elections, even if the current party, based on the way the, 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 the electoral map is currently structured, even if the SLPP succeed for winning the presidency, they will not win parliament as well. Parliamentary majority, they cannot repeat the same Abbas Bundu kind of situation twice. <laughs> you don't understand. So it will make sense to have a census that will produce perhaps, which there is no guarantee that there's going to be more population in the Southeast that will generate more uh, 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 constituencies in the Southeast. So this is where the political argument gets in because the politicians are the ones who advanced the need for a census. Okay, while it's the right of the president for declare a sense, uh, uh, call for a census, but he did not even go around it the right way. We may not even talk about the procedures, the processes where for don't go through the legality because this government has shown that it's not committed to following the rules in any aspect of their, of their conduct from the way they took over the parliamentary speaker, speaker position the way they took over parliamentary majority, okay? The way they've gone through their appointments of people, the removal of people in, from offices, from the way they are even running the finances of the country is in complete violation of the laws of the country, finance laws, regulations, all kinds of things. So they, they are not, it is it's in the DNA of this government. It has been operating, disregarding the, the constitution, disregarding the, the, the secondary legislations that support the constitution itself, or that, that are derived from the constitution. So debating the legality and illegality of the, the current government, the president, and in proclamations and in actions will be a waste of time because they are not committed to that. They are not committed to following the rules from the, from the get-go, from the day they took parliament, from the day where the president ordered uh, uh, police for going to parliament and remove and force a vote on parliament on, on parliamentary leadership. That's a crisis. So we we, we 
they have undermined the sovereignty of parliament from the beginning. That's why the parliament is, is unable to function. Chaos. All we don't see in a parliament is also drama. If not to that, uh, civil society people that tend to support the government will accuse parliament of corruption, but they cannot accuse the executive branch of corruption. They cannot speak on the corruption of the first lady, but it's comfortable for them to speak against parliament because then they try to undermine this current parliament because from the very beginning, then they are not comfortable with the composition of the current parliament. So, so we have to even understand how this government has worked against parliamentary processes. So we will not be surprised with the current uh, uh, drama in a parliament because it comes back to the, the violation of due process. So the, the question then is, what can citizens, how will citizens understand this? So and, we will and, we will that chair now. I want to let you hold your thought today because in the end, this is going down to how citizens get for react or how they have to be primed, you know, if it's the reality that, that we're in. So we'll now just see, let me see that they briefly if we can, sir. Um, Sister Fatma, mute your microphone, please. Sister Fatma, sir, please mute your microphone. Hello. All right. I don't even think you hear me. So, Sister Fatma, when you join the platform, to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Um, sorry about that, Mr. Ba. Um, so what I want to say, um, um, Mr. I mean, I'm going to say you touch on police brutality a little bit because the thing that they're so intertwined with each other that when you act one, one definitely they overplay uh, the other or there's a subtleness of um, inside one particular question, but specifically police brutality. I mean, it's not so new it's not something alien to the culture and it's from government to government. But um, we've seen as violence, like um, not witnessedly, like every other day there is something, or the police will be caught brutalizing uh, a citizen. And um, I don't know whether it's systemic. Uh, I don't know whether it's orchestrated, like part of the actions then, like one of them where you mentioned earlier on, but what's in a general view again about police brutality and the state? Well, the, the, the police violence or brutality, you know, they happen in isolation of the general um, climate of repression where we don't witness that the country since um, the Bureau administration take office. Like, like how I say, um, you just have to look at what, how, how the parliamentary leadership was taken. And that now the sanctioning of state violence, you know. So what do we see in the form of police brutalizing people, beating women, and uh, uh, all this violence against people? Now, now the result of state, now a manifestation of the general violence where the state not orchestrate. You look at the violence that Pademba Road. You look at so there has been a heightened uh, level of violence ac across the country because the, level, the climate of repression don't intensify. In the past, for, for example, I, in 20 years, we made a report for newspapers and write in the newspapers. I will tell you, say, I have, I have experienced a you know, more intense um, insult uh, from state officials than I ever did. Okay, uh, uh, threat, insults and threat to me online. Like, Chairman, what's he, what's he and, really, what's he really the, 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 why has it stepped up to this level? Is yeah, because, this, um, because, uh, because the, point is, the point is that Madabio never went to state house with a clear, clearly defined overwhelming majority in both rounds of the election. This was a very unpopular candidate, both within the party, okay? If, understand that the circumstances first way, gen, way result into Madabio becoming the presidential candidate of the party was the result of internal party crisis, violence at the SLPP, to the extent that he was imposed deliberately on the party. Because the party's manifest, the party's constitutional arrangement was if you don't contest one time and you lose, you cannot recontest. But the, SL, the Madabio's uh, supporters within the party, largely in the executive, decide for arm twist the party and uh, wage war within the party to the point that they hijacked the platform of the SLPP and drove out, then crowd out everybody when I suppose for think for think the party. So you have a militant group within the SLPP that rode to, to power 
uh, with a with a tiny majority based on also the 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 nature of politics where uh, uh, Anaskoroma introduced within the within the APC one levels of we of of the party conflict that the SLP the imposition of candidates that the APC so the state was unpopular and uh, the, the Anaskoroma's government after ten years was everybody was dissatisfied with it so the mass national anger and dissatisfaction with the Koroma with the couple the fact that there was no significant alternative this murder building became a by default the benefactor the of that, of that with a tiny majority yeah. so when you when you write when you come to power with a tiny majority like that the best way for our own government would be to con through concessions concessionary approach okay and because they cannot they don't understand democracy as an as as a work in progress as a as a um something where you go con where, where you go negotiate you know understanding power as a, as a negotiated approach to power so they decided that the same method that they used to hijack the SLPP platform for making Ghana power they can use that at the state level and the difference here at the state level is that there are many people some who are even independents who will not allow that to happen because if you, if you allow that to happen it means the stability of the country and the progress and peace of people will be at stake so people are going to see it and they are going to expose it so that is why uh, all of us then became interested in intervening and exposing the facade of the regime, both in its so-called commitment to corruption as a veil to just clamp down on people that they are not actually really committed to fighting corruption because they are, they are actually engaging mass scale corruption that we have not seen the innovative methods. So in China China. quickly, um, um, so that that, that lead to the violence, violence that lead to the violence because they cannot equivalent to like um state capture well um it's just the nature of not a state capture because the state hasn't captured um they don't get the capacity for capture because they cannot capture basically they want to govern through fear through psychological terror that's the thing that is through violence and the violence now will make people way uh um by nature uh no one this argument back and forth in so they can insult you into silence they can threaten you to silence they can intimidate you into silence so if they cannot, they can also arrest you uh, and, and incriminate you and try to put you in a jail like you have the Camarimbas in prison. You had Paolo in prison for, on charges they cannot, you know. So you see them bulldoze parliament and decide to take the, impose the speaker. They want to rule by force because they don't have a majority and they don't know how to go around uh, canvassing compliance. They want to exact compliance and support for their policies through violence and through force. If in parliament, they have to pass law through violence that's what you see with their effort to uh, do the proclamation and the resistance from parliamentarians because, because they want to just use terror at every level at every level that's what they are doing now they want to have a feast they want to have a celebration they cannot have a celebration with the people joining them they have to put police on the street so they can have a party with their with the president's colleagues just you know so this not the this not the <laughs> so the government the government is so unpopular and it wants to force people to comply and because they cannot have people it's not a military regime people with new advent of technology new deliberation of the instruments of mass communication so they they are they are doing force everything by force and now it's it's it's, it's not working because in a new age we get a population 85 percent of it is young this population they in conversation with people all over the world okay so with, with their cell phones they can undercut they can undercut government's legitimacy by saying well president is a lie they can go online and just google like you say you've paid yeah a before you know it's somebody can just google General, you talk lie. about poli you talk about policies i wonder what to have more spam policies quickly because you did mention policy so um what we do know about policies is like policy not to knee-jerk reaction not to based on opinion but rather the, the statistics and we don't see many policies you know of government it looks like certain policy they need and fail because if they put it down to the people and not get effect, then then policy they need are not effective at all. They were not well thought out through. What's your view on policy about this um, current government?
It's basically it's the, 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 the policy. When you develop policy, you got to incorporate um, public opinion, public government, that for fulfill the common goods of the people, for to provide services. So if you come to a situation now where everything has to be a fight, no say you approach to governance is is faulty. You cannot have people challenging every decision you've made is because you have not consulted with them. Okay, like now for example, yeah. you have a situation where you you want to proclaim a census. There's a procedure of going through that. You don't follow the procedure. And then people raise the objection to that kind of procedure. This is not how government functions. Because you're just thinking force has to be the only way. And now you, you summon parliament automatically for appear. Then you don't also do the consultation because you, you think by consulting, you will be having a contrary opinion or somebody's input that might shape your intention and your objective for which you conceptualize the policy in the first place. So because you know one for uh, shape that, for make it reflect the general aspiration of this, that's what democracy, all shades of opinion might not be incorporated into, but they, they might count in terms of how the final policy or decision is made. But if you decide, say, you exclude all of them, why are, then you will have the majority opposed to the policy. And it's not going to end for making it work. You can for just use police because you get violence. State, the state get violence. So because you cannot use your brain, you cannot think, the next thing you resort to is terror. To terrorize people into compliance. Then that becomes dictatorship. So then you begin to also blame the people for not allowing you to work, to work because democracy is negotiation. It's, it's conversation. It's never by force or by, by decree or by executive. Authority only. So uh, these are the problem now. but you might not like them, but they have meaningful inputs that will serve the interests of the state. For example, you hear the NGC has been talking about constructive uh, opposition. They're helping government to suggest. And so these suggestions, you might not even say I've accepted it, but deep within you, you might change particular ways that you want to do things to reflect, to pacify. So pacification is basically what astute leaders do, but leaders that are very dumb, and that are very, um, they have a passion to just impose their will on the people, okay? They, they don't care. They don't, they don't even know how to negotiate uh, policy. So in the end, they develop laws for themselves instead of laws for the society. So and let me ask laws you... Laws are not made for society, yeah, yeah, policy yeah, yeah, is not for society. Yeah, yeah, it's about, going to be rejected. Um, thank, you, thank you for the articulation. Uh, I mean, you, you, you break this down for even uh, the layman deep inside the village for really understand, yeah, there are little jargons in there and um, terminologies, but in the end, if you follow, you will really catch the trail because it's like you're much more like a um, kind of lecturing, if, um, if you like. But here is the thing, with all of that said, the hope and aspirations of the people lie in the very parliament because they cannot go to the executive, they cannot go to the judiciary. By the Afrobarometer report perception, these institutions, including parliament itself, are very corrupt institutions. Not me saying that. The reports are out there. But one of the last places where the people in the hope side and send everybody for go represent the various constituencies inside democracy, we see this ISO will happen where you don't articulate very well. In terms of all waiting, you don't see. Where does the hopes and the aspirations of the people lie? Because there is plenty of disappointment right now in the mindset of Sierra Leoneans. It's like, where can you turn? Hence, we've been to talk about conscientizing the people and preparing the people for understand. Break this down for us again. Where should the people turn? What do they need to do? In, yeah. A, before we talk about what is uh, who done an Afro-barometer, would an Afro-barometer and local allies and anything, and they make we talk about, for example, what do we mean by parliamentary corruption? Okay, and and how parliamentary corruption they happen, by by virtue of 
then position parliament, of course, is, is, is supposed to be independent. It's supposed to be very powerful. Governments cannot spend money without parliamentary authority. But then much of what we call parliamentary corruption is induced by cabinet, is induced by the executive branch of government. For example, if, 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 if you get um, appointment, you get, you get a, 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 a finance uh, estimate, for example, the, the, the budget regarding how government intend for generate money, how they intend for spend money, then they go to a parliament. If some of it does not make sense, then some MPs are seduced by either bribes or whatever. So it's induced by, by the executive members of government where one get either an appointment approved or a particular bill you know, passed through parliament or a particular um, interrogation regarding an oversight arrangement was supposed to happen, the way it's supposed to happen, it not happen, then the MDA, people in that MDA or government ministry decide for compromised members of parliament. So this is how what's in the report about parliamentarians are taking supposed bribes or they're induced by, um, they are just approving appointments without vetting these appointments. And people think, say, perhaps some of it has to do with bribery. If that is the case, then we have to know that these bribes also are coming from the executive branch of government. So basically the executive branch of government disables uh, parliament and the current parliament now is not just being disabled by some of these inducements to corruption that we talk about in the net forms of executive bribes to parliamentarians, but already from the beginning, the sovereignty of parliament was affected by the police invasion of parliament and the imposition of a parliamentary speaker, which means that the ruling party in itself. Um, decide for command parliamentary majority by use of executive power and use of judicial, uh, uh, through the use of the judiciary. So in that case, in some instances, even if um, opposition party members decide for, for, for vote against a particular proclamation or, or bill or decision of the executive taken to parliament, they will just be on record of having opposed that particular legislation, but they cannot basically change it because there are other things again in our parliament is so structured that members of parliament from the from ruling parties cannot even vote against their members they might be accused of anti-party activity and the the law allows it for parties to recall their members from parliament they can punish their own members for failing tawa might give you a testimony of some of the struggle some of it he cannot say publicly i'm sure but we've had that situation we are parliamentarians might not agree with their party's policy when that party is in power, but they cannot vote against it because they might, they might either be accused of anti-party activity, they risk even being suspended, they risk becoming backbenchers. We saw Givao apologizing to forcing, was forced to apologize to parliament. So these legislations where they where make even individual MPs are more, they are controlled by the party instead of the people, the constituents. So it gives them, it makes them incapable to move independently because their loyalty becomes the party, because the party has a hold on them through the allocation of party symbols. And not only that, the others, the standing orders of parliament also precludes parliamentarians from standing against their parties. They might, people in parliament, parliamentarians will share that experience with you regarding. It's different from here, where you have perhaps Labour MP might vote against um you know policies against, for a labor a labor government because they will look for my constituents they care about the constituents or the us you have republicans voting against a republican decision a republican bill a republican legislation they can explain it that's not in the interest of their constituents it's not like that in sierra leone so if, if the party no will remove you they might deprive you of the party symbol okay so few people will say i don't mind losing the party symbol in the next election but again I will vote in the interest of, of my country and in the interest of my people. Eh? Very few. And in this case, we've, we've seen Tawa, uh, Honorable Tawa Conte becomes an exceptional in the case that he, he is resisting the party's control and the party's dictate on how he should function as an MP. And you see, he never get the support of the party. Okay? So this, this are, these are some of the things. So we get for understand, I think the, the struggle is how we get to make with public institutions, the institutions of governance, independent from the police to the human rights commission to the ombudsman's office 
to uh, the National Commission for Democracy. Now you don't hear about it, even with these challenges happening. So all these different facets of the, of the state, of the governance structure, the PPRC, you see the compromise of the PPRC, that's a different case, the National Electoral Commission. So until we have a situation where what you call the democratic institutions or the institutions of governance, are themselves structured in a way that they can be independent of the executive arm of government is going to be a problem. We are the judiciary is going to be independent of the executive arm of government. In some parts of the world, they've been able to arrive at that point by, by making sure people get elected into judicial commissions, into judicial positions, or even, and they serve a particular term of office. So which means then they get security of tenure. If government come, go their salaries because some of these people again in these commissions for example you get pprc commissioner that's appointed by the president so he might be a sympathizer or a supporter or in some case member of the ruling party so when an opposition party get problem that pprc that should mediate will intensify the problem maybe the problem the the the, 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 the division within that opposition party serves the interest of the ruling party so the pprc will deepen the confusion by even ruling in a way that will allow the thing. And you go to court again, the court will rule in a way that furthers the division, that cripples the leadership in a way that it will enhance the, the ruling party in power, will make the opposition ineffective. Okay, And, and in that case, then you find out that why, why is the people in these institutions doing it? Because they know if that government, if that party, they come on a power, it means they will lose their jobs. Losing their jobs will mean they will lose their salaries. Each of these commissioners are paid, uh, some of them 60 million, 70 million, 80 million, some 100 million a month. So if, if their salaries are 100 million, where are they going to get a job in Sierra Leone that will earn them that salary? 70 million, 60 million, apart from that political appointment. So it means they are not basically protecting the government or the council, they are protecting their jobs, their paychecks. So we have to fight, find a way to have security of tenure for some you know, democratic institutions. We also go for revisit the question of salaries in the country. Salaries, because people's access to good paying jobs depend on their relationship with the state. I think they say something, but you are muted. Prince, I think you are, you are muted. <laughs> Yeah, many, th many thanks for that. Which I mean, it's right for say, um, basically, we cannot bring you come, we not touch on things that we, basically, things that we don't talk about are very close to your heart, but more things that we don't touch on, we don't cause um, um, division in the, in the country. Now, the economics and corruption, everything we'll talk about is embedded inside, but I want to be specific a little bit. I want to talk, I want to let you let you give me an account of um, presidential impress and what the mean and how is it being used in tandem with the Finance Act law? Yeah, that that's a, a crucial um, question because the president came out and and say he is the president of Sierra Leone and if he if he's traveling, the state get the responsibility for take care of him. Okay. That is, that is, of course, um, a valid point that we elect leaders and then we, with an expectation that they can function for, but at the same time, they cannot treat the national treasury as their own bona fide property, their own personal account. Okay. There are standard so rules of uh, uh, DSA. For example, the UN standard, they will tell you uh, $500 maximum, and that might include your payment for hotel. These governments, even their appointees, their political appointees, they will have, we have published letters in which we saw, they will say DSA, UN rate plus 45%. Okay, they give UN rate plus 45% for a country with a broken economy as ours, a, 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 subservient, a donor subservient economy. Not only that, a heavily indebted country country will get huge burden of debt, the way they increase and multiply by the, by, by the year, okay? We have a situation where political, public officials, mostly political appointees, when they travel, 
they enjoy DSA, daily subsistence allowance at a UN rate, plus 45%. So now the president, because they say this thing is legal, if you're traveling, you get access to it. So he takes hundreds of thousands of dollars in the name of, he is entitled to impressed. So what we noticed in our investigation is that there is a consistent pattern of using international travel and the payroll as tools for divert public money in the name of legality to the private uh, uh, to the private possession. I don't want to say even private accounts to the private possession of public officials. And the president is number one in the use of this this uh, uh, operation. He's in the lead in this operation. For every trip that he has taken, and that he goes along with his wife, and both of them stay in the same hotel, he has not taken less than $50,000 for every trip. And when his wife goes along with him, the wife also takes from the same travel account, which is supposed to be the presidential travel account, half of the amount taken by the president. For example, if the president take uh, $60,000, the wife will take $35,000. If the president take $50,000, the wife will take $25,000. This is different from the money that has been allocated to the wife in our own account. This We are talking about the presidential local and overseas travel account. There is an account that is set up in the central bank, which every president uses. That account is funded, is used to fund the travel activities of the president, both within the country and outside of the country. Basically, this is the account that they should use to buy tickets and also for his travel impressed. Mm? Now the president, we, we pray, for example, he went to Japan, it, it withdraw $270,000. He went to Lebanon and withdrew on one transaction, he wrote $410,000 cash. This is after the expenditure on tickets. This is not the pocket money. So in that trip, the president had $91,000 as his own personal impressed. The wife has $37,000, more than $37,000. So both of them, in between them, they get over $120,000. And they are, all, they are all going to spend the night in the same hotel, the same hotel room. And this trip is five days. And, and interestingly about, for example, Japan, the president's uh, protocol arrangement has been made by the host government. So when, and the rule is, if you take one, 10,000 as impressed, you go abroad. When you come back, you should retire the remaining balance. For example, if you spend uh, 8,000, you come back, you for return the 2,000 to the bank. So when you look at the record of the president, this current president from 2008, for example, in, in, in the Lebanon case, they, they took out over a million dollars, supposedly paid for aircraft, supposedly, you know, but in cash alone, nearly $500,000. When they came back, they returned $12,000. And five days later, they will send someone else to take from the account $200 million, which is $20,000. So both the $12,000 that was returned plus $8,000 was taken. Was, so now like you pretend they don't return the money, they go take more than what you don't return. So there is this consistent, some of these also is cash. For example, after this program, we're going to release... Um, we we just spent the last uh, me and my colleagues spent the last uh, since this morning to aggregate amount of cash withdrawals for by the first lady alone not from the not from the impresto this is basically money that was given to the central bank account of the first lady that has been well, we don't take cash because so far we will only publish details regarding 2018 we will not publish 2019 2020 so today we just said you know what can we do we, we let us release details of the cash withdrawn from the first lady's account, private account, personal account in the Bank of Sierra Leone for 2018, 2019. What we found that we will aggregate number of first lady young withdrawal is close to uh, lit, uh, close to 10 billion, uh, 9 billion some hundreds. Okay. That is, if you check, that is about a million dollars in cash withdrawals, taking cash. This is not money used for, supposedly used for furniture, used for um, all of this. And they will tell you this, perhaps if you say this is impressed, okay, how can you use impressed in that fashion? Then there are no records to show where this money went to. 
what you did with it, no records of reasons for withdrawal. You cannot withdraw some in 200 million. We, as, as we finish this program, we're going to publish that without even writing. We're just putting the, because now you find out that when sometimes you write these um, analyses, we are drawing our own. Sometimes we put this thing out, say, let's put the data out and see what people. So when people come to my, come to the Facebook and begin to comment, and so we aggregate for, to see how people understand these, these numbers and, yeah. and, and figures. So to answer you, basically, we have noticed that this government invent what, are, what we call innovative mechanisms to, to steal public money without being noticed. And one way they do it is by international travel. The other method is by frequent and massive cash withdrawals, which nobody can trace, okay? They are, they are, we, we, we're still investigating where some of this cash is. Some of it is out, some of it is within. And, and interestingly, <laughs> anyway. Um, well, I mean, we're interested in that. Why did this decide for Shire? No, and, no, uh, as no the, and point, the point is that, that because when you, we ever when know Usaide <laughs> money they are on? Usaide when, you, when you withdraw, exactly. when you, because for example, when you travel with $200,000, to Japan, $207,000 or $100,000 to Japan, then you track presidential expenditure in that trip and you find out almost all, all everything has been catered and you spend just three days and then you return. There is no record of retirement of these remaining balance of these funds. Then the question is, did you leave the funds in Japan or have you brought the funds back? Where are they? Are they in your house in the bunker? Did you do you have a safe where you keep this money in your house? So these questions are what we are getting to, basically as as we go along. But mm. so when we throw this information out, we're basically trying to see whether people by themselves will be able to see what what we've already seen, and we keep showing it bit by bit. For example, how how you go explain one million cash withdrawals from, from, from a government account run by the office of force? By the way, the account in itself is illegal. But you have this illegal withdrawal back, illegal removal of the money that is not conform with the rules. So when you withdraw cash, you cannot trace it. As opposed to now money paid to AA Enterprises as furniture in future, somebody can say, let's bring AA Enterprises to ask them, how much furniture did you sell to these people? Where's the evidence? Where's the furniture? And then you can all go further for probe AI enterprises then then transactions from their own accounts for see where the wired money to. So when you, you know? when you when you say when you say that, Chairman, are you implying um, that in the future, after they will have left power, that there's a possibility of some kind of um, inquiry into how these monies were spent? Is that what you're implying? Well, the government itself talks it and they investigate. Uh, I mean, the, the anti-corruption commission did promise people of an investigation. Then, in between, in the middle of the in the process, the president came out and said the wife is not guilty. So basically, that is an unwillingness for probe into some of these uh, financial, you know, uh, uh, um, misconduct and 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 crimes as as they are. This um, unexplained use of public finances for lack of a better word. So somebody will have to demand to know exactly how much money has been withdrawn from the central bank. In, I mean, in, the SEC boss say it will investigate the office of the first ladies under pressure supposedly from um, the Africanist press, the publications. Yes. But, but now the president, the president and the minister of finance don't already say, the minister of finance issued a statement in which they did not deny this transaction. They said it's normal. In fact, they claimed say now one percent that 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 the money given they have the right to allocate money to the first lady under a prerogative that does not preclude them from giving one percent to you know a non-budgeted what they call an off-budgetary expenditure uh, but even at that if that is the case they should they are required by law to present the expenditure to parliament for approval and parliamentarians did not they did not know about this until we brought it out because Absolutely. Parliament knew. Yes. because yeah. i think i get a conversation on a platform ago recently when it's guy for quote the law and i was saying exactly what you're saying because somewhere i'd read it or i'd listened somewhere in which you need yes entitlement but parliamentary approval or parliament need to know i think two weeks in two weeks 
yes. and then, and and then not, even, not, not only that, parliament not even know, parliament not approve of them. Then not only that again, the one percent they are claiming, the money they allocated is more than even money is allocated to other ministries, and we intend for sure that uh, a couple of days from now we we are going to publish an a comprehensive analysis of allocations that will include allocations received by the first lady, allocations received by, for example, Ministry of Gender and Social Welfare, Ministry in several ministries. So people will see whether the first lady's um, <laughs> expenditure, uh, I mean, allocations are actually less than uh, other ministries. But how can you explain a situation where the first lady has more money than the, than the Ministry of Information? Or the Ministry of uh, yeah, sure, Mr. Affairs, Mr. or the Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. Obviously, we fast spent into this program, but we still get almost 400 people still tuning for tell you how much interest people get in you in your works and which in you actually get for C, because you're a prime guest. Um, so maybe we can at, uh, attest to the other question there in short bust, um, but feel free for digress if you want to. Um, recently you publish something, and I believe it was just a snapshot of the First Lady, where you say something like, um, I think I just saw it in passing. So because there is plenty of fake news now and you get for pay attention, so I might ask you this um, straightforward, in which uh, the First Lady of Sierra Leone, um, Mrs. Fatima Jabibio, is the First Lady where in foundation the benefit from um, the coffers of um, government. If that was your your... Um, um, take out there. Will you please explain for Fambul and let, let we understand, including myself, because I'm a bit lost. What's wrong? Yeah, with I, I think we don't put out a, a massive ton of information that some of it, some of the details get lost in the in the process, which is why you you notice for three weeks now we have not even published anything. Um, yesterday, I think was Sunday. For three Sundays now, we haven't released new information. Because we we want to try to see how the vo volume of the release is sinking. Yes, apart from this illegal allocation that we, that we talk about, where the office of the first lady or the wife of the president has no right to receive public money, we also notice that the there's an account um, run by the uh, Mada and Fatima Bio Foundation held by the Guarantee Trust Bank. Okay, we don't even publish the details of that and all of that and highlight how this account, the first lady even wrote letters asking for support for the Hands of Our Girls campaign, especially the launching of the free sanitary pads campaign, where she was asking uh, businesses and institutions of government as well for donate money into supporting the Hands of Our Girls campaign. And then is there anything all, wrong with us asking, uh, Mr. Ba? No, we are not talking about the... For, well, that is the thing. If you have a foundation of that nature, you are allowed to raise money, but also any money raised in the name of Sierra Leone or Sierra Leoneans... Aha, uh -huh, okay, that's the technical difference. Okay. Yeah, that's the technical difference. But here is the case. This money was raised in the name of the Hands of Our Girls campaign. There are already two government accounts set up for the First Lady, one in the Central Bank, the Bank of Sierra Leone, and one at the... The second one at the local commercial bank. So you will expect that if these monies are paid, are donated by any business organization, say for example, Africel, Mercury International, or all of these other businesses that are parading around with the first lady, they give money, that money should be paid to the local commercial bank or the, the government account set up for that purpose. But in this case, suppose donors, we are directed to pay the money to the account of the president and the wife, the Mada and Fatima Bio Foundation. And we also published letters showing examples of people who paid 50 million, some 100 million to this account. And that account holds more money than the money we are talking about in the central bank. And then we, we have tracked the transactions in that account. We have not published the bank statements of that, which we, are, we intend to do as we go along. Also, there is no evidence that the money received in the uh, Guaranteed Trust Bank, and this is, I'm talking about, this is as far as last week, there's no evidence that that money was transferred to the First Lady's account set up by government, either the local commercial bank or the um, Bank of Sierra Leone. 
So which means that the money went to the private use of the foundation. Okay, so, General. So there was also one. there was also another issue about the First Lady's bank account. I think with the um, um, National Bank of Sierra Leone. So something yeah, about account accounts. Sierra Leone. That are different. Not, by the way, we are talking about three accounts here. Yeah, okay. exactly. So I'm getting lost in terms of accounts. You know, like <laughs> private Fatima and Mara Bio Foundation account and a Bank of Sierra Leone accounts. We have listed. Uh, we we have. Uh, so far, at minimum, identified four accounts associated with the operations okay. of the First Lady. One only, now we don't publish on so far. Details of one, now we don't release. And that one is the one held by the Bank of Sierra Leone. Okay? The, uh, that account was set up in June 2018. With the first check was 2.98 billion Leon signed an opener with the first allocation. That, by the way, was more than the money received by the uh, Social Welfare Ministry in 2018, okay. and more than the amount of money that was allocated to the uh, Minister of uh, Information in 2018, I can tell you for that one allocation no more. Hmm. So you will come to see that that account is illegal. It's illegal to set up a government account for the wife of the president at the central bank. A second account also run by the office of the first lady was set up a month after this June account at the local commercial bank. And that account also received government money. It also received money donations from NGOs in, in, in Freedom because you, can, you cannot donate, you cannot deposit ideally in the central, the central bank account and money where government can give as a budgetary allocation just like they will give a ministry or a department. That's why they set up that account. This other one now is one who say you they receive donations. Now, if you uh, then and now want to donate to the first lady, they can take it to the uh, Rokel Commercial Bank and donate and give money. So that's second account. The third account is the private account of the foundation, which is held by the Guarantee Trust Bank, private bank, GTB in Freetown. Hmm. There is another account in the name of the mother, uh, I mean, the, uh, these JMB women and associates, which also receives money, some from, you okay. know. Wow. You think, say, so, it's a deliberate attempt, you, you know, yeah, at deceit, you know, like um, trying for meander the trail. So it would take somebody way um, dedicate time and um, resources because it's a high-level thing. And no. uh, only people like who are able to arrive at which one arrives. So other than that, a lot of people will have been in the dark. So do it you think just, it's a deliberate attempt at um, no. the it is just, the, It's just an effort to use the state to, to um, divert public funds, to use the position of the president to uh, enrich themselves. Because now, for example, if you write a letter to a businessman, promising that, asking them for donations with the promise that you can get 10 tickets to attend the presidential dinner, and those who pay first will be on the first row, will be on the front rows. So you see, that's like peddling influence. It's a corrupt act. Yeah. It's using the influence and position of the president to rake money from, from businesses. People. Because ordinarily, nobody will donate to the first lady if they were not president and, 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 and wife of a president. So that's using the presidency and the status of, of being president and wife of a president to, is in a way, is legalized extortion. Okay. Yeah, so, it's, so it's that just is, not ethical. It's not like yeah, it's not, there's, there's a whole range of issues there. Issues yeah. of, in plain simple terms, you call it corruption. But like you said, questions of ethics, moral issues, yeah. and issues of business, using the state as a, as a business, as, a, as an effort to accumulate wealth. And because that is why the first lady was adamant in saying she was not a recipient of public funds and was even challenging the public to present evidence of yeah and general, i want to ask you i want to ask you on that basis day i mean you you've inflicted a lot of damage i mean it's, no, it's, it's out there by western standard any government will have collapsed or they will have voted them out of office or no vote of confidence and etc i do understand that on we own side it's um it's um it's different but with all the denial and they previously and having forced them for accept which position are they in now? It's like they just kind of give up and say, okay, whatever. What do you think? 
No, um, in the first place, I want to correct the fact that it's not a damage. I think we don't do uh, right by the people of Sierra Leone and the country. I no, feel I mean, very, it's damage. Yeah, I feel it's no, yeah, yeah I know for the people because that's how they see you as a hero, yeah. and they all over the chat room. But to yeah. them, it's a it's yeah. a damage to it's a damage to them because they, so they have. I thing. think they have done more damage, and they keep doing more damage to the country. Even now, they're doing a the damage. Ask yourself how much money is being spent to bring in guests to entertain them and parade them around. It's not just coming at the expense of the treasury, it's coming at the expense of the freedoms of people, the ability of people to move around in peace, to go about their daily business. Now the entire central uh, streets of Freetown, uh, uh, you know, what you call cordon, you know, uh, encircled. Nobody is allowed to use them tomorrow because we have foreign guests. They don't want these foreign guests to see the reality of the people. They don't even want, they want to present a calm environment, an orderly society, a very benevolent uh, regime. <laughs> okay. And yes, in the midst yeah. of poverty, in the midst of suffering people who are not paid salaries. And, and we are also looking at the expenditure associated with this. And we hope that we will be able to present the evidence of how much has been, has been uh, misused by the government in this entertainment. Yeah, so there's a treasure, there's a treasure to them, people that should yeah. expect. So, so Pabulem, we round up now. Mr. Bar has done exceptionally well, you know, yeah, within so, time. So we and are not so we are, we, we are not doing any harm to them. I think they are doing more harm. One will expect that if now listening government or leaders who are considerate, they will definitely calculate how they intend what kind of fanfare they will have, especially in the midst of a financial crisis. But the president has no has no um, conscience when it comes to misuse of public funds, because how will you spend out of the travel account $3 million in a year when the entire world was in a lockdown in COVID in 2020 alone? How will you um, withdraw a million dollars and from the central bank and go to Lebanon at a time of crisis without explanation? All right, Chairman. You know? So, so um, these are the people that will get conscience. They have no conscience. That is, I think that is what is uh, that is what is the damages. The damages we are dealing with individuals who have no conscience, who can, who don't have no, they don't get any sorry heart for the people. Then, then that is what is I think, for me, very um, serious because I think I I keep thinking about the psychology of people who govern, what kind of mindset, what kind of what is the psychology of of this kind of governance, but then I am reminded I keep telling myself you are going to be the casualties of your own logic of governance in the final ana analysis because people are going to hold people responsible. Yes, Jono. Um, Fambule, we, we, we wrap up, and like I've been saying, the man has done us all an enormous favor in the service of nation. There is no if and buts about that. And he continues to do that by making the rounds on social media, keeping us informed. As we wrap up, I want to touch a little bit, or I want to touch a little bit about um, specifically the social, because we talk about all of that. I think we've covered almost all of that, but the structural inequities where you talk about is so prevalent that um, the head of state, as by your measure, lacks um, empathy for um, his people. Um, but now we want to present himself as that kind of benevolent leader to the outside world by entertaining them on the 60th anniversary when the people are deep down in poverty. Everything almost has dropped. The question I want to ask um, um, Mr. Mr. Ba is um, um, frontline health workers is compact. Frontline health workers, um, especially the incident in Connaught, um, where frontline workers were not paid. The IMC, so-called $400, where are we? $400 million, where are we with this, this IMC? Because a lot of people confused, they can send me questions, where are we with this? One moment, the first lady dancing in the world, the next moment you understand, say, now just eligibility, eligibility was construed as a non winner. Where are we? Please help for the quantity. Yeah, how much rice to give? Well, I think the- Can just use my poll? Not Mr. Suma, will you will you mute actually... your microphone, please? Oh, okay. Mr. Suma? Yes, sir. Sorry, my apologies. No worries at all, sir. That's all right. 
Yes, Mr. Ba. The the of course we know say the MCC government don't use them a lot as as a slap on we face as citizens because each time we talk about pervasive corruption in the administration misuse of public uh, funds and uh, um, the climate of repression then quick for point to the indices of the external actors where the um, we tend for score them high but I have said for the two years almost run into three years that the, with the exception of how the discussion is now collectively changing with people's input, because not to win no more, African Express don't do this. There are multiple of voices across um, the spectrum, um, including what's in the opposition coalition, the opposition that is now coalition is trying to do yeah. with the um, involvement of this kind of conversation that you're having here, including me, including all different actors, other kinds of uh, platforms where people are having this conversation, independent actors on their own, um, leading the people to think and, and, and get conversation around waiting, how to hold government accountable, don't help with or build some kind of uh, contending narrative around questions of governance, questions of uh, um, accountability, transparency, to the point that now, from what I believe and what I know, international actors themselves will have to consider people's voices in their engagement with, 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 with local politicians. So, and diplomats operate, operate um, differently. Their interest will be there, there, but also their interest can only be guaranteed if the government of the day has the popular will of the people. And by increasing development happening now, um, every individual has a concern, has, has to be concerned. Now, what to make the MCC thing, I think very interesting for people to understand. This government, they canceled the mining agreement of um, an, an American company. Cell mining. Yeah, we published a guest article recently in which somebody was talking about how that decision is a hindrance perhaps to Western investment, to foreign direct investment to Sierra Leone, including US investment to Sierra Leone. And MCC, by encouraging um, a climate of good governance and transparency, they are also providing uh, a good terrain for make any US investment able to drive Sierra Leone free of the bribery, the environment of bribery and, and corruption. So if that case alone can be used as an example, um, there is every reason why foreign direct, in, what you call foreign direct investment, get for approach or get for be very difficult for attract to, for, for any, for this government. And apart from this fanfare that's happening now, really we have not had any um, individual of, of stature that has visited Sierra Leone. Truly, truly, with all this travel, now the government is forcing an event on the country for pretend that, oh, after all, the president is known because he has traveled to these places. But this is the first time they are forcing this event in, in the period of a serious crisis. Yeah. So what are the trying to arrive at now that? I think if we continue to amplify these citizens' voices, what it does is that it provides a contending narrative to the state. Because those people, they know they talk, they know they will articulate and show evidence of what, different from what in the government they, they show, then the government's word becomes the byword. Okay? The, the only... A verdict. But now when citizens are collectively speaking out as we are now trying to do or we, are, we have been doing, and we allow that for develop into a national conversation, into a holistic conversation that challenges the, the narrative of the state, then nobody is going to ignore. So, so Chen, no, can we relate that back to the cyber law proposal? Because yeah, 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 probably that, the governments, that. they read far ahead and know this, this contending narrative in Africa yeah. empower the people then. Yeah, what, what, what that, um, looking, looking at the African Express example, I, I have never seen a situation in Sierra Leone where the press appears to be, appears to be, there are few exceptions. You can single out um, Standard Times, Awareness Times, The Nationalist, you know, like that, few that appear to be in The Times and all, the, all of, you know, few but marginal and going through difficulties but when you when you look for the most part they cannot touch the african express publications 
in the in the sense that some of it has to do with the fear that there are consequences some of it has to do with the fact that the government don't cage the media and part of the part of the thing is they thought by by encircling the media space especially what they call the traditional media space or the old media space the newspaper the radio the television they can have conversation about what we are writing but they cannot even in some cases involve us directly in the conversation which is very unusual so i uh, know ever see him in the last uh in 20 years this is the first time i'm seeing almost a passive allegiance or active allegiance of the mid large sectors of the media with the state against against uh, questions of citizenship okay oh. questions of questions of citizenship so what in that mean that um the government may feel say by so doing they can succeed to to remove the africanist press from the conversation absolutely absolutely by, by leaving it from the beginning media, of the leaving it to, leaving uh, the cyber yeah. law They say they say so that social media. Many people talk no more. Social media, social media. After all, I just talk. Yeah, I just talk. For them to realize now that the instruments of mass communication, this new media, is more potentious than what they think. Because now you can make an audio in London, and within five minutes, it is all over the country. You can make a video in five minutes, it is all over the world. So now you see. There is even effort on the part of the government. Have you woken up to that reality that they've ignored a crucial element? Then don't begin to form their own. Absolutely, absolutely. I was going to come yeah, to. They that. don't begin yeah. to form their own. Uh, yeah. uh, even someone said they are starting a weekly column, just like we will publish. So they try to duplicate it. You know, they do uh, with their own online platforms and all of that. So the yeah. state yeah. is now trying to count to catch up, which is good because. Then It's the conversation continues. This is in their own independent actions. Yeah. So no, nobody, you no, know, they able to control information nowadays. So you can. So what they are trying to do, I have said, they are going to be victims of that law, because in 1965, they brought the same SLPP under uh, Albert Magai proposed the Public Order Act. The yeah, Public, Public Order, Order Act was Act, not just yeah. designed to cage journalists; it was also designed to muzzle. the right to assembly the right to association the right to information the right to free speech but then two years later they lost the election so check as stevens yeah you... absolutely check no um, um let, let's leave that historical aspect because well, that's uh, quite true well, it's good for us to say that but well, just a, 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 a quick one on that check no a quick a quick one on that yeah. i no one let it, let it, i no one lose me thoughts on that um obviously you've nailed the you've nailed the press with few exceptions you know we've been part of the conversation but are you astounded again by the silence of the interreligious community or are they to the non box them up and the cso's way in please no I, i i think um the civil society space not specifically um i hate to enter into religious conversations by nature of it i leave religious leaders <laughs> with their own congregations okay so um the active civic society space you know is what is what um is interesting by by october um last year the civil society large sector of the civil society was active following the makeni standoff between what appeared to be members of the poro society and the indictment of the former president many of them we are calling for and condemning the incidents they were, did not condemn the the uh, riot that, i mean the incident that led to the deaths of five people many of them never condemned the police but then they were condemning the standoff mounted by members of the poro society in the name of fighting to stop corruption then all of a sudden we have published this barrage of evidence and none of them with the exception of few i think marcela spoke about it on radio that I had but apart from that I haven't I am yet to hear uh the voices of some of those independent supposedly independent civil society people who are actors actors uh against corruption in the past they are now silent pretending that this is not even happening they are now talking about censors yeah. they are not talking about the need for censors but they cannot talk about the need to carry out a holistic investigation to prove whether these 
uh, evidences are the case or not. In fact, they are supporting the government's narrative that there is, this is not evidence of corruption, even though parliamentarians have written to the finance minister, to the bank governor, inviting them to parliament or inviting them for an explanation regarding these disbursements. General, uh, two, two, two quick, two final questions. Um, but I have said in the be... past that many of them are also um, on payrolls. Okay, I have said that before. And and in the in the chief minister's account that we published, you can find the details of some of the civil society people. Uh, Hawa Samai, for example, who was yeah. given a contract to. So these are examples. <laughs> and you find these evidence. If you look at the Ministry of Finance, you will see um, people being paid in the name of advertisement, in the name of consultancy. You saw recently Sano coming out to challenge corruption in the Ministry of Basic Education, but he was also an appointee of, of government. And now that he spoke out, they, they dismissed him. So this... And, 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 and Mr. Ba, um, do you think this space, this small space we left for let, um, um, we hold a national conversation, I mean domestically, I'm talking about back there with um, other um, um, interested parties, parties of interest, uh, stakeholders, and you name it, do you think that space, as we they see, it will become more, um, um, it will contract more? I mean, it will close down that space. And secondly, we'll talk about the video um, actually will come out from presidential guards. Of course, it's abhorrent, distasteful. But uh, the question I want to ask about that video day, then bodyguard, they did not go make that video day and send them out on their own. Uh, uh, do you think, um, would you think that it was sanctioned by a higher up authority? Because um, I don't think they will do it on their own. What's your thoughts again on the two things, Lady, please? In the first place, the, 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 the space. Uh, government, government will do everything to constrict the space, for, for narrow the space. But citizens, they always got to find ways for um, subvert subvert not in illegal means, but for challenge and, and overturn government's grip on uh, information dissemination. These days, uh, with the current technological generation, governments and dictators get for land for live with um, people and ability. China, we a China. Do they book on to Russia, we a Russia. You know, um, we get one of the best investigations we happen in Russia from a group of investigative journalists and the evidence came from the street um, with the Navalny poisoning um, situation. So what what should they say? The government of Sierra Leone were able, no matter how they and try, they will not a, be able to suppress everybody into silence. It's, it's, it's impossible. In fact, they've lost they've lost the debate on 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 public policy. They're not able to debate now the violence all over the place. So do you so, believe the concept we just talk about in in other words, the government just believe in violence? That the concept of um, I think that's Sansu. Um, um, the Chinese philosopher on the art of war, that when you try for box of people or cage of people and you not provide an exit strategy, obviously they will they will fight back, they will come back. Yeah. You know they're in their interest, you know they're in their interest for do so. Um, uh, but coming to this, which is why you see this, uh, the two are related, the construction of the space, people and determination for engage government and hold leaders accountable and speak out and come to this question of the presidential guard force uh, presenting an audio to threaten people with death if you then continue for um, express their civic rights and human rights, right to assembly, right to speech, and all that. Nothing of that nature will happen without the authorization of this current president. And the president don't, you not know, only don't indicate that, he don't tell me that. He was on radio a couple of days ago, weeks, and on a supposed town hall where he said, they asked him, what do you think of the ongoing harassment, basically the ongoing media harassment of the Auditor General by members of your party. Because the, the Global Times that is in the forefront of the media campaign against the First Lady is owned and operated by SLPP, members of the SLPP, who are not only members of the party, but, but members of the administration. A board chairman, Suri Fufana, is the leading owner of the paper. The former editor or the editor of the paper is also the board chairman of the Salyon Road Road Safety Authority. So <laughs> this paper, nine the lead then two journalists there, and then paper, nine lead the lead the attack against the forty day, and even the attack against me. <laughs> so so they asked the president a simple question: what do you think of the 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 harassment of this woman? 
the audit service for having done so well. Yeah. He said, what do you say about my wife? Okay. Were you disappointed you or was it expected? Me? So basically, that tells you the president, uh, the, the, the mindset. Yeah. What do you think? What Over. do you think about? What do you think about the division in the country? The country is polarized. He said, "I'm not responsible for that. Everybody. That's how I inherited it, and it's going to be like that way." So, wow, Mr. Ba. Basic, so basically, um, you don't have to look too far. Yeah, the, exactly, Mr. Ba. But here, here, here is it. Finally, finally, Mr. Ba. Finally, Mr. Ba. I've got no more questions um, to 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 ask you, other than ask you. Um, if you can round up this um, um, marvelous, awesome program, which we've just held. And I want to say thank you, you know, here for your time. Not forget for Add Insight, how the people can be primed for prepare for what is to come. So, um, tonight, we, uh, immediately after this program, maybe within the next 30 minutes, I will post on my Facebook without a, not an article, but all the cash transaction carried out by the First Lady in 2018, 2019, 2020, and with uh, notes of also the budgetary allocations. That na a prelude to an analysis that is to come in the next couple of days, where we intend to show that the Ministry of Finance lied about the fact that the allocation to the First Lady was just 1%. So we want to show almost this First Lady, but now we just show on our force because we've never published the 2019 bank statement. I know we did release the bank statement of the First Lady for 2018. We've never published 2019 and 2020. But some of the information, we don't talk, talk about them, but we want to show the evidence. So we've put together the transaction details of all the cash withdrawals from 2018, June to uh, December 2020. Okay, that is for the entire three years that they've been, with the exception of January, February, March, and this April. And let me also tell people we are, we are, keeping, we are keeping government on tab, on, on track. <laughs> so <laughs> we intend to do this as part of our, our ongoing contribution to the discussion. And let us don't relent. This, the government is in denial, but they know that they've been uh, faced with a challenge now, they have this explanation to make. They are trying very hard to distract the people. We have to keep them focused on the issues we want to discuss, whether it's issue of transparency, issue of good governance, issues around uh, census. We have to set the terms for the discussion that we want to have and then undertake that discussion. But government knows that when they say something don't happen and everybody they go, Talk this. So sometimes they throw these things. Yeah. They use people to throw these things out so that people will talk uh, about that uh, while they do some other points. things. So we have to also distinguish which conversation we for put with NIG on and which conversation we for ignore, which yeah. conversation we for take on and which conversation. Citizens must set the agenda of the public debate. That is basically what it is in a democracy. And that's how governments will be forced to engage with what the people want to talk about, not what the government wants us to talk about. Once we arrive at that point, then with the, the nature and character of governance and democracy, they change. And people don't get away for hide. And that's how you expose also the opportunists and the, the agents of the state where they hide and we missed, pretend, say they are neutral, but they are not because you have to draw the lines clearly. It's either you are with the people or you are with the state against the people. So once we draw these lines and then we know who we are. So when, when things change, people go either fall with the state or rise with the people. That's how we have to make the conversation. Um, Thank we'll you so much, Mr. Ba. Sister Kadi Johnson, Cole, I mean, you've been very patient with, with us and uh, you make one <laughs> contribution to the program. The other guests, them, they, they've been um, um, observers in the, in the back room, which is not too bad enough. So give me one final two minutes of your overview of the program and um, any other thoughts? Just two minutes, please. Sister Kadi Johnson, Cole, you're mute. Mr. Bar, do you have clarify something for me? Uh, you mentioned about uh, JMB Wing. Did they get funds from the government? I'm going to understand. I'm going to pick that side. Mr. Bar, don't go. No, I didn't. Yeah, you. Um, are they asking? I'm, you know, you mentioned. You mentioned. No, they I, mentioned I, just, I just mentioned these various. Uh, uh, did they get money from, from the government? No, I'll not make a comment on their source okay. of funding for now. 
I just talked oh. about the Mother and Fatima Bio Foundation. I just point to the fact that oh, okay. there is these different components of the operation where we also get to pay attention to. But I don't want to precipitate what is going on there for now. What I want to tell you, what I want to tell you, Mister Ra, um, uh, funnily, me and somebody, I've been talking with somebody tonight before even. I just done at the time I realized this, this program the only way I see when the message. I mean, don't forget this. We had a mention to the person say, any government will come in power next, next, next. If Mr. Ba continue for do this work, we will do so the Fogiaman Award, the Fogiaman one of the highest award not all. And that's <laughs> alone. That was what I said actually to the, this evening, just before I come on this on this show. Yeah. So um I I wanna thank you very, very much for all which you don't do because we don't ever see journalists in a saloon for go to such length. We go. And anybody we like Sierra Leone, no go, no go go against within you don't see. It's so easy for CC. There is some truth. If not hundred percent truth, you understand, but I think that the degree of truth but um, all which you don't tell me for make anybody will like salon, not for doubt you. For for um for applaud you for that. You see, even though the government not will see you that way, the um members, supporters of the government would not see you that way, would not even appreciate the length that you you you, you don't go through. But me want to tell you thank you and I would like for let you continue to do that work because me, anybody where they fight corruption, I always been at the same page with that person. I they support anybody who fight corruption. If they support, if you fight corruption against me or husband, say for me picking them, I will support you. So long as you defy corruption, because corruption don't make so many people they suffer in a salon. So many people they didn't salon with poor today. So now that's what I just want to say. I want to tell you thank you and uh, not give not give up and not succumb to people that we desire for discourage you from doing what you want to do. We are all for you. Now the very first time this uh, actually see them they listen to you that for the very first time. Although I can hear with you they say. So me in a one person way, I really, really applaud you and I thank you so much. If I am to be the next president of Sierra Leone. I can assure you that you will get the highest award. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay? Now that's number one thing. Thank you, Mr. Akroma. Yes, um, sister, very, uh, thank you so much for your contribution and obviously Mr. Badon wrap, wrap up the program. What an awesome program this has been. What an awesome road this has been. Mr. Bad never disappoints. And you can see the um, um, sentiments expressed by one of we observed in the room. We happen for meet Mr. Ba um, tonight and able for talk to him directly and appreciate the work we're doing. I'm sure there are millions and millions of Sierra Leoneans who discourage uh, social media all of the time. And we know the message they resonate. We have to make that absolutely clear. And there are people, like I say again, millions who really appreciate the work that is being done. And any work we is done on a righteous ground, <laughs> obviously, shall prevail. It's as simple as that. Many, many thanks, Mr. Ba. Thank you. Okay, so Fambule, we don't effectively come to the end of the program. I will just play the national anthem for one final time, and then we close this program. But well, it's been a wonderful run, and we still get about almost 400 people still in on the platform. So, dear, when I begin for wind down now as the platform, as the national anthem, the play. Um, we officially the usher in um, the 60th birth anniversary of the country, the nation, Sierra Leone. And um, in eight minutes' time, so again, I tell you now, the program not effectively finish. So we the wind down now. So family, and please, when I begin for um, um, come off the platform because I'm not just one log off on over 300 people. Thank you so much for watching and happy independence anniversary to everybody. Papi, you been tell we say that we trust the process But man, let's call out the progress of the process Rearing suit and tie, man, dot in karata Tif man, they are latif, now this is the matter I, whoa, 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 yeah Papi, you been tell we say 
make we trust the process. But find the scholarly progress of the process. We are in student tie, band or tikarata. Ti fande ala ti flow the system bata. I Rasta man, me no Eric Kokemu, me represent green, white and blue. That's what me a fi do. Then me the water that it then a wake make it settle and then then jump inside. Then the dirty a more. Ti fande ala ti flow the system bata salon de go bien. Who that now we go believe oh from side life we the live so. I say now the capsize life we the live oh. I say now the wrong side life we the live so. Eh. It's just a capsize life. We the leave you now, yeah. Oh now, whoa, 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 whoa yeah. Papa, you been tell we say, make we trust the process, but when the scholarly progress of the process, we are in student tie, fantastic character. Tif man de ala tif, now this is the battle. I Rasta man, me no hairy cock and boot, me represent blue, white and blue. That's what me have to do. When I meet the water, that you know, it make it settle and then you jump inside. You dirty and more. Tif man de ala tif, now this is the battle. Salon de go be it. Who that now we go believe, oh, wrong side life we daily. Sorry, say na sa na sa na say say na sorry, yeah. Wrong side life we the live so. Why? Oh na na. Wrong side life we the live so. I say na the cap side life we the live, you know. Yeah, man. Real wrong side life, you know. So frustrating, you know. When you hope say things it should be better, and then you see some funny, nasty things happening, you know, that continues to render the country backward. It's frustrating, <laughs> you know. That's why sometimes some of us sing songs of this nature to tell how much we can educate the masses and really try to make people have a positive mindset. Because sometimes we blame the politicians, but we the people have the problem. Because we celebrate the criminals. And when you celebrate criminals, what else do you expect? <laughs> they reinforce the behavior. They reinforce, they, they think what they are doing is, is good. It's legitimate. So we the people sometimes have the problem. We have the problem, you know. We have the problem. And we need to stop celebrating criminals in governance. And until we stop celebrating criminals in governance, we will not come out from this.